I've been playing Absolute Tactics and Daughters of Mercy because you have no time to game. Just in case you're not aware, the When the Credits Roll series is a set of reviews made after I've finished the game, basically, and seen the credits roll. So you know that going in, that I played the, at least the main bulk of the game. Anyway, on to Absolute Tactics. This is an odd game. It's quite dark in tone and theming, but with a veneer of cartoonishness over the top. We find ourselves in an odd world where the Dark Lord known as Father Eldritch and his daughters are harvesting magical juice that seems to be extracted from murdering other humans. But standing before them is our merry band of would-be heroes, with Huxley being the main man. Huxley, at the start of the game, comes across the statue and gets infected by a mysterious being that keeps guiding him to fight against the machination of Father Eldritch. It's not a particularly deep story, and the twists can be seen coming from a mile off, but it is serviceable uh, for sending you to the next battle, which is all you really need. <laughs> Absolute Tactics was made by Curious Fate and saw its release on the 15th of September 2022 for Switch and PC. And it took me roughly 20 hours to see the credits roll. But anyway, a game is made up of its gameplay, but before we get into the nitty gritty of the battles, we have a simple menu system outside of battles to navigate, allowing us to change our character's gear, upgrade or replace their classes, buff their stats with the required items. The items you can get from the equipment, pharmacy or item shop that are just on the menu, each sporting a different array of items, which all upgrade quite regularly as you progress through the game. And you can also select optional battles, which kind of act like the regular battles, but each has like a hidden note for Huxley to find. Uh, this usually involves a bit of a tile hunt to find which random tile has an extra HP menu showing, like HP bar showing, and then you smash it for a small reward. A chest of some sort, and, and a loot goblin, an enemy that gives you an item for beating it up. This whole outside of battles is very simple, unlike other, others of these sort of games. You won't be spending too much time in it. So onto the meat and bones of the game. Maps are very interesting in this game as they have an incredibly varied design and have a lot going on within them. Outside of enemies, you have colored crystals to smash that unlock doors and chests, treasure chests, berry bushes, little holes for Max to find things in. Max being your Huxley's pet dog that he collects at the start of the game. Barrels of the explosive kind and more. The more, in many cases, usually affects the map at enemies in some way such as smashing tanks full of magic goo to damage bosses. On top of this, things can change as you progress through the map, like enemies hopping out doors or holes, bosses messing up the place. It's pretty cool to see so much going on. Made it go to the next level, interesting. So I want to see what we're up against next. Characters can equip two classes. These classes can be found all over the place, whether it be in the shop or in the chests, etc. And each one is unique to the others and can be upgraded using another item that you can either buy or find called a class upgrade book. Now as I said, classes are varied and there is a bunch of them. So you have the classic warrior that gets a couple of smashy skills, or the conduit that's focused on SP regeneration, SP being what you use to utilize skills, or the necromancer, which has debuffs, resurrection abilities, and even classes focused on getting more XP. As well as giving you a skill layout, they also provide a different stat buffs that makes for a surprisingly flexible system, as you can piddle around with the characters and classes to your heart's content and make the characters just how you want them. The only thing you really need to consider is how your basic dude's weapons are going to be affected by these skills and the ranges and such, as each one kind of has a slight difference with like Huxley just kind of hitting in front of him, Arkin hitting two squares in front of him and does damage to both. Uh, Kali has a super unique flail which hits three squares, but two spaces away in each direction. So it depends on how you face. Row is a crossbow wielder. that's not restricted to hitting close up like a lot of archer types are in tactical RPGs. So she's effective in close and long range. And there's even more here, um, but I won't want to ru ruin everyone. The actual battles themselves are classic turn-based tactics. The normal kind of I go, you go affair, where you move around the grid, with side and back attacks doing, doing greater damage. Honestly, outside of its very classes and some of the basic characters' basic weapon and some of the characters' basic weapons, it's about as classic you can get in this regard. 
It does have one big twist though, and that's the war battles. Like, these are on larger scale battles where you have a ton of NPCs on your side. And the goal is to kill off all your enemies while keeping as many of your soldiers alive as possible. This can be uh, a bit interesting because they're not the smartest. They tend to just walk forward and hit the closest enemy. So you have to kind of predict where you think they might go next from that and do your best to save them because they will just throw themselves at an enemy that will kill them. But yeah, it's, beyond this, the, the gameplay, like I said, is, is quite simplistic overall. It's, um, it's So while the maps themselves are, are varied and such, what is actually good about the game, though? Well, in this case, the classes are actually quite fun to play around with, with some interesting, unique ones out there. And the gameplay itself is pretty solid, if a bit simplistic. It delivers everything you expect from like the kind of Final Fantasy tactics, varied style of tactics games. But the game did struggle in some areas. Well, and in this case, I feel the game kind of blows its load fairly early on. While there's a lot going on on each map, it's the same lot of going on on each map going forward. So once you've seen all of its tricks, you'll just be seeing those same tricks again every map going forward. And there's a lot, but it gets kind of repetitive. And on top of that, enemy variety is very, very lacking. It can make the game, it can make the game feel very repetitive. But it's saving grace is it doesn't actually go on that long for a tactics game. So normally at this point, I'd put in like a, a critics review scores based on Metacritic, but it hasn't actually received a, enough reviews from big publications to get an actual score yet as of recording this. Um, so on to my final thoughts, I suppose. Overall, I did enjoy the game. While its story and characters are very simplistic, they are serviceable and its gameplay is fun, especially with the variety of classes on offer. And it's in that simplistic, it's, it seems to take on that philosophy of is, simplicity is king. So yeah, taking that, if you're looking for a simple, quick, easy to get into tactics games that's not going to melt your brain, then this might be for you. Hence why I'm giving it my final rating of for niche fans only.